After landing in Lahui, we drove straight to the condo in Princeville, taking a very curvy highway past palm trees and mountains. We stayed at the Pali Kekuo Resort. Our condo was great. Our bedroom had an attached bath and so did Dan and Dries. We also had a nice kitchen, dining area, and computer desk for the guys to check their email. We all enjoyed sitting in the family room on the comfy recliners and couch, but our favorite spot to be was on the lanai enjoying our fantastic view. Across the lawn from our lanai, you could look over the cliff and see some lava pools. And if you walk down about 50 yards to the left, we had a great view of Hideaways Beach and Bally High. The views from here were breathtaking, especially during sunrise or sunset. Well, Kim, first day in Hawaii, what are your thoughts? I don't want to leave. We'll come back to Princeville later, but for now, an island tour. We begin on the North Shore at Ka Beach. This is the furthest you can go on this side of the island before the dead end of the Nepali coast. On the drive there, or back, you must travel over a dozen one-way bridges and wait your turn, since there are no traffic signals on this part of the island. We passed a cave and a lagoon, where someone called us coconuts. At least, that's what we thought. Hey, what did that guy call you? He called us a coconut. He called you a coconut. He said coconuts, plural. He said coconut. On the way back to the condo, we realized that he was selling coconuts on the roadside. Next along the North Shore is a town called Hanalei. Todd thinks this is like the Gatlinburg of Kauai. The two main shopping restaurant areas here are Ching Young Village and the Hanalei Center. We enjoyed breakfast and lunch here and the island delicacy of shave ice, basically a fine grade snow cone on top of ice cream. This is also where you gain access to Hanalei Bay Beach and the pier. It was cloudy that day, but usually the bay is beautifully blue. The Hanalei Lookout is a great spot to take a postcard perfect picture of the taro fields with its checkerboard pattern of greens. Next on the tour comes the town of Princeville, where our condo was. We had shopping and restaurants close by and passed the golf course en route to the condo. The resort we stayed at had a great restaurant on site called Saffron. We had some good Mediterranean and Spanish food there. We also went to the Princeville Hotel, which was big and fancy. We enjoyed breakfast there while overlooking the bay. Dan and Dree came back another night for a romantic dinner. Also in Princeville is a lava pool area called Queen's Bath. The trail began only one block away from our condo and wound around down the cliff. Queen's Bath. So far. Yep. Nice, buddy. We went up that way. That like we had to leave Dree sitting on a safe spot and continue to the pool area without her because she's pregnant. We saw a few pool areas, but the waters were rough and didn't match the guidebook pictures where people were swimming. I'm gonna go up here and see if I can find it because I don't think this is it. Because I'd kill myself. <laughs> We continued over many rocks and finally found Queen's Bath. Yes. <laughs> Kim didn't even fall or slip once. The beach at our condo complex was too rocky for us and the walk there was very steep. So we went snorkeling at Anini Beach, which was only minutes away instead. Further down the highway, we passed Kalahawaii Falls, which you can see right from the road. Let's go, let's go, 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 Then you enter the small town of Kilauea. We drove to Kilauea Point and saw the lighthouse and bird sanctuary from the lookout. We continue our journey around the island and pass by Kalalea Mountain, which is commonly called King Kong's Profile. It's on the inland side of the highway right before the town of Anahola, which we call the Indiana Jones Mountain. Why does the road move? On the other side of Anahola is a beach called Kealia, where waves were big and boogie boarding was exciting but scary. 
Continuing around the island, we are now on the east shore and arrive in Kapa'a. We had breakfast here at Java Kai and a place called Country Kitchen. We also had dinner in this town as well at a place called Coconuts. Right between Kapa'a and our next town is a complex called Coconuts Marketplace, where we did all our souvenir shopping and saw a hula girl. Nice! Right after this marketplace is the town of Wailua, where we experienced lunch at the Korean barbecue. This town is also the route to Opeka Falls, the Twin Waterfalls, and also Wailua Falls, the waterfall from Fantasy Island. Welcome to Fantasy Island. We met a local here who told us some island trivia and made a plumeria lay for Kim. Further down the highway, we enter the main city of Lahui. This city is where the airport, hospital, and Walmart are located. You then pass through the small town of Puhi. We turned down Kipu Road so we could see Kipu Falls, another Indiana Jones landmark. The trail to the falls takes you through a sugarcane field, and car vandalism is high in the area. We saw broken glass everywhere, so Todd went back to watch our valuables, and wouldn't you know it, Kim slipped on a rock and fell in the stream with her camera. Fortunately, nothing got broken, and Kim was okay too. We've now made it all the way around to the south shore of the island. Off the main highway, we traveled down Maluhia Road under a eucalyptus tree tunnel. We passed through the small old town of Kaloa. We continue south to the town of Poipu. If you go east, you end up at the Grand Hyatt, where Todd and Kim had a romantic dinner at Tide Pools, a floating restaurant with waterfalls and koi ponds. If you travel west from Poipu, you come to Spouting Horn, a blowhole made from a lava tube. Back along the main highway, we come to Kalaheo and Route 540 and the Kauai Coffee Plantation Center. We stopped and enjoyed some free samples of the different coffee varieties while checking out the small museum and coffee fields. The other side of Route 540 ends up connecting us to Hanapepe and Ele Ele. This is where Port Allen is located. We traveled here to check in for our sunset cruise sail on Captain Andy's boat. Our captain was actually named Captain Rick. A boat is the only way to see the Nepali coast, but we haven't reached that part of the island yet, so you'll have to wait. Now traveling to the west shore, we come to Waimea. We had lunch in this small town before driving up to the Waimea Canyon Lookout. There are many twists and turns on this road, but the views are breathtaking. We pulled over and took a photo of the Waimea River from only halfway up the mountain. Finally, we reached the lookout, and wouldn't you know, we were stuck in a cloud. The canyon was filled with a white haze, but every so often, a break would occur and give us a peek of what lay below. We took some pictures and began the road back down. Traveling west, we reached the end of the highway at Mana, which translates to Gone. But there is a dirt road that leads to a fenced-in military boundary. Right before you reach the military boundary, there is an even smaller dirt road on the left. It is so bumpy and potholed, Kim thought the car door was going to fall off. But if you travel for about four and a half miles, you come to the most beautiful beach on the island, Polihali State Park Beach. The dunes here can reach up to 100 feet high, and the beach goes on for 17 miles. Oh, me too. The far north end of the beach dead ends into the majestic cliffs of the Nepali coast. Since you've waited so patiently to see the Nepali coast, here is an example of the natural beauty of the cliffs and valleys seen only by boat and the splendor of an ocean sunset. This is just a small portion of the wonderful memories that we made while we were on our trip to Kauai. We look forward to returning again soon. Aloha!